In today's video, I'll be addressing familiar and important topics on my channel. Things like procrastination, overspending, and sad little boy characters. What more could you ask for? Witch Hat Atelier is a series that I've known about for a while and had a feeling I would really like, but just didn't get into. That's a problem for me in general. I have a tendency to find a thing that I really like and build a little nest in it, which is great because I become incredibly knowledgeable about that one thing, but in exchange, I don't venture out much into experiencing new things, which can cause me to stagnate. However, I made a new friend who is really into the books, and she offered to lend me them um, upon hearing I was interested in them. And at first I said no, because there is an anime for Witch Hat announced, and I thought it would be better for me to read the manga after I had seen the anime. And my reasoning for that is that I can get super picky about changes that are made to a story if I've read the manga first. Like, if I read the anime first, I can usually enjoy it for what it is, like accept it as a separate entity, and then read the manga, and uh, even though I'll notice the things that they changed, like, I can still enjoy the anime because I watched it before knowing about anything they changed. Uh, so that was that was my original idea. I was kind of wanted to like safeguard myself to make sure I enjoyed the anime. But the more I thought about it, I felt like I was preventing myself from enjoying a new thing. So I took her up on her offer and borrowed the books. Since the anime isn't out yet, I'm going to give a quick no spoilers summary of what the series is about. And uh, the series isn't even close to being done yet, so I can't go super hyper analysis mode anyway. Witch Hat Atelier by Kamome Shirahama is a manga that began publishing in 2016. Shirahama's style is incredibly fresh with very lush and detailed backgrounds that resemble European woodcuts. And she has even done work for Marvel and DC Comics. I think closely working on the western side of comics in addition to the Japanese side is part of what has given her work such a unique touch. This contributes to the character designs which are incredibly diverse and creative and I think all of this together is what helps make the world feel fuller and fresher and also its moral dilemmas feel more real. In the world of Witch Hat Atelier, magic is being essentially gatekept by the magician class who are the only ones who know how to use magic and who know its history. Magic is a really big part of this world's history, so by withholding it, they're withholding a lot from the common people who live in, like, villages. The magicians are doing this with good intentions because the ideal is that magicians will travel around and they make tools to help people in their common lives and they help people. But the truth is that there's a lot of corruption even in the magic world and suffering that could be easily alleviated by allowing greater access to magic. And the reader is challenged to think about whether any of this is right, with Shirahama doing a good job at giving both sides weight and making it clear how tangled all of this is. The focus of the story is on the main character, Coco, who is learning magic under Master Kifri alongside his three apprentices. The magic system in Witch Hat Atelier is all about drawing circles, and it's really neat to see how much focus is put on such a simple part of doing magic. In Full Metal Alchemist, I know it's not magic, but the characters also use circles which are very complex, but whether or not a character can properly draw a circle is never really an issue. Witch Hat Atelier has characters struggle with drawing circles smoothly, drawing circles correctly, and remembering what the right circle even is. And each character has their own goals with magic and struggles that come from their upbringing and ideas about what magic should be. So my friend, the same friend who lent me the books, told me that she wanted to cosplay Coco. 
and being a cosplayer myself, I naturally started thinking from pretty early on if there would be a character who I would want to cosplay. And my first fledgling of a thought was Agate because she looks like me. Uh, but her character ended up not really gripping me. Uh, I think she's really interesting, but she wasn't the one. The character who ended up gripping me was Yuini. Yuini is a very shy side character who takes uh, one of the entrance exams alongside Richie and Agate. Yuini has famously failed this test several times, which he believes is his own fault, but it's actually the fault of his master who continuously belittles him and he already has low self-esteem, so it's not it's not a good situation. You can even see this reflected in the costumes that the characters wear. So Master Kifri's apprentices all wear an outfit that is derivative of his, but clearly unique. Whereas Yuini is dressed almost identically to his master. Yuini's arc is a lesson in learning to adapt. Having tried to take the test so many times, he has memorized every single step and he learns from Richie and Aga that there are other ways to do things. Meanwhile, the girls learn from him that even when you're following other people's rules, there are ways that you can make magic your own. That's as far as I'll go with my no spoilers wrap up. But uh, as soon as I finished that, that volume that Yuini was in, I knew that he would be the one. So making this cosplay was complex, not really because of the cosplay, but because of the way I decided to make it. I decided to con crunch it. And if you're not a cosplayer, con crunch is when you wait until the last minute to make your costume. Uh, I used to con crunch a lot when I first started. It's kind of normalized and I don't like it. Uh, I find it to, I think some people genuinely get a boost of inspiration from it and work well under the pressure. And you know, there is the idea that cosplay is something fun and it doesn't matter if your cosplay is perfect because you're having fun. But um, I find it to be really wasteful because a lot of times you have to remake things since you made them in a rush and a lot of times you'll have issues with something fitting. I've had cosplays that looked really good when I wore them in my bedroom the night before and then the next day when you're moving around and then they start falling apart. And those are things that you just can't test for or prepare for when your intention is just to get it together. So uh, since like in my early days, I used to con crunch a lot. I decided to stop doing that because I would always end up feeling bad in the costumes that I made. And since then, my approach to cosplay has been, I make cosplays whenever I feel like it. It's something I genuinely enjoy, so that's fun for me. And then when the con rolls around, I just wear whatever it is that I feel like wearing out of my, out of my closet. I've also pretty much stopped making cosplays specifically for cons. It's just, these are my boys and I'm gonna wear one, I'm gonna wear a couple of them whenever. But I ended up con crunching this time because I didn't have a lot of money and I was hesitant to buy supplies. Also, I wanted to make sure that my friend was making the costume before I made it. Uh, and by the time I finally settled that, I had one month until the con, and one month seems like a long time, especially for a con crunch, you would think that's great. But that doesn't mean that I'm able to work on the costume every single day of the month. And in the end, most of the work on the costume was done in a near all-nighter the night before the con. So I'm going to split the making of the costume into two parts. The first one will be the draft version, which is what I wore to the convention that first time. And then the second part will be 
the revised version that I fixed up to wear to a different convention like nine months later. My original plan was for this to be a vlog, and because of that, I have a lot of vlog footage of me talking you through day by day what I was doing. And I have intentionally made long videos in the past, like my Celine Bradley cosplay video, and my Celine Bradley Dolphy dream video. And the point of that was to emphasize how much I struggled with certain things and kind of put you in the mindset of what I went through. But I think in the case of this one, I just failed <laughs> to make it in the month that I had set aside. So I am going to use some of my vlog footage, but I'm going to use it as B-roll and talk over it so I can get you right past me saying, I'm gonna buy this, and then me the next day saying, oh, I wasn't able to buy it, stuff like that. Hello and welcome to the promised voiceover segment. Look at what a beautiful background I had prepared for this section. Also, I have sped it up slightly, so hopefully you don't confuse seeing my face talking with hearing my voice saying entirely different things. I am going to be putting pictures on the screen, so hopefully that should help. Before I get into the actual costume breakdown, I want to bring up this character's name because this is something that has plagued me. Uh, throughout the whole time trying to make this video. So I have chosen to pronounce it Yuini. Um, I believe his name is Yuni, which is a real name that I have heard sometimes. It's not very common in my experience, but I have heard the name Yuni before. But looking at the katakana, uh, it looks like Yui Ni. So that is why I am pronouncing it Yuini, and uh, I couldn't fit that into the segment earlier, but I'm going to say it now. I'm sorry if that is wrong. It could be. We'll find out when the anime comes out. So back to the cosplay breakdown. I'm going to tell you how I looked at the costume and decided, oh look, look I have look at how cute this was. This was gonna be so good if I had made this in a month like I thought I would. Anyway, in this section I'm going to talk about how I looked at the costume and broke down the individual pieces into something that I could make easily. For a long time now I have not liked making cosplays completely from scratch. This might be surprising since I'm a cosplayer but I kind of hate sewing. It's not incredibly fun to me um, especially when things don't go well and the thought of making a whole garment from scratch is not something that I enjoy. So a lot of times I like to thrift things and find pre-made clothing and alter it. That brings me like so much joy. So that's what I did for a good bit of this costume. Looking at Yuini's costume, he is wearing some kind of a tunic with leggings, pointy shoes, a cape that has a sash and a hat. So I'm going to start with his under layers. First off, there's the shoes. I have a pair of shoes that looks exactly like that. I decided to use those. Uh, cosplay shoe accuracy is not something I care a lot about. And the shoes I had were a very good match, so check right there. Next up we have his leggings. All of the characters in Witch Hat wear, not all of, a lot of the characters in Witch Hat wear these leggings that have little buttons on them. It's very cute. And I decided to make those for myself by just buying some normal leggings. I got these off Amazon. Uh, also, while looking at his under layers compared to his cape, to me a big thing is that the cape is pure black and the under layers are a grayish color. So when shopping for my under layer pieces, I wanted to make sure that I was picking something that would let me have that difference. I also had a good laugh at the pictures that come up uh, when you see modeling for leggings. I, I did not look like that when I wore them, just so you know. After that comes his little tunic robe, whatever it was I called it before. This part is a pretty big challenge for if you're cosplaying from Witch Hat because uh, I, I like the leggings. A lot of the characters wear these very intricate outfits underneath their cloak. Uh, Kifri's apprentices especially, they wear these dresses that have really complicated pleating on them. Thankfully, Yuini's 
little robe thing is not as heavily detailed but what I'm seeing is a long sleeved robe with buttons that go about to the crotch and then uh, some some lacy little sleeves that also have buttons on the sleeves buttons on the sleeves that's another big thing in witch hat they use a lot of like what they call bishop sleeves these are not bishop sleeves i actually don't know what these are called but if you look at a lot of victorian-ish clothing you will find that detail and that is what started off my journey to try to find some existing piece of clothing that looks like this so seeing the Victorian inspiration, the first thing I did was head to all the Lolita websites I know, hoping to find a very simple looking Lolita dress. Uh, I found a couple, but I think I didn't find any that were exactly like what I wanted. Uh, they would have the sleeves I wanted, but not the neck, or maybe the length would be different, or maybe it's just that they were out of my budget. And what I eventually started to think about is nightgowns so there is a whole genre of nightgowns that is victorian nightgowns which i super dig and i need to get me a victorian nightgown but i decided to look at victorian nightgowns on amazon and see if i could find some that matched exactly what i was looking for i managed to find some that looked really good for a lot of the girls costumes but i could not find something exactly like Uini's. And I eventually ended up whittling Victorian nightgown down to just nightgown. And it was here that I hit the jackpot or the closest thing that I could to the jackpot. Here's the nightgown that I went with. It had a couple things I liked. First off is the length. It's actually a little bit too long, but that doesn't matter because I can always shorten it. If it was too short, I wouldn't. It would be harder for me to make it longer. Next up, it has long straight sleeves and it has a higher neck. The neck is not as high as what I need, but it is high enough that I can work with it. It also has a placket in the front with some buttons, so I just need to add even more buttons. So uh, a lot of these issues, a lot of these issues are things I can work around pretty easily. The biggest one though was the neck. Yuini has a high neck, little robe tunic thing, and to uh, to alter that on this, I decided to go with a dicky. I don't remember exactly what gave me the idea for this solution. It feels like something I may have done before. But uh, yeah, I got this three pack of dickies and you can see there's one that is gray. A perfect match for the nightgown. So that covers the underlayers. The next thing would be the cape, which is a very big deal. And for the cape, I decided to go with a Vogue pattern. One of the reasons I went with this pattern is because I was helping my friend do Coco and she was using a Vogue pattern. So in my mind, I was just like, all right, I'll also get me a Vogue pattern. And as the video goes on, I'm going to discuss whether or not I think that was a good idea. But yeah, that covers the first step, the costume breakdown. So uh, by the end of breaking this down, I had my underlayers, which was a nightgown and leggings and a dicky. And I have decided on my pattern that I'm going to use for my cape. So uh, right after this, after I had decided all of this, I made the orders on Amazon, and then I went about trying to get the fabric for my cape, which ended up being some kind of crazy journey. You know what's really fun? It's actually not fun at all. Buying fabric. So uh, since I've been making a lot of cosplays by piecing things together, I haven't had to buy a big bulk bunch of fabric in a long time. I've also been doing characters who don't wear things like capes. So a while back I told myself next time I do a character with a cape I am going to go to a wholesale fabric store. So um, in my area we have a big uh, 
a wholesale fabric store. There's like one that all of the cosplayers go to. Here's where the problem, the first problem happened. So uh, I told my friends, I'm gonna go to wholesale fabric store. And one of my friends said, this is not her fault. What happened is not her fault. But my friend said, oh, I heard that they opened another location. And I was like, wow. So I was like, all right, I'm going to visit this, this new location that I've only just learned about. And let's see what happened. Bro, I got here. There's like nothing. <laughs> this is a little scary. Are they open? That's right, after driving an hour, I learned that the store was not even open. Uh, I checked again and the store's only open like two days a week. Anyway, this was, this was a bit of a devastating setback. I had put, put out the whole day to come here and that's what happened. So I ended up getting boba on the way back. It, this was my two hour boba trip. So right now it is October 2nd, October 2nd, AWA as Halloween weekend, which gives me about three weeks to finish this costume. Today is finally the day that I'm going to the fabric store. I'm going to the other one, the one that will actually be open. It's been very slow. You know, I, I officially started this on like October 2nd to be like, yeah, it's it's month. It's cosplay month and I haven't gotten anything done. So uh, hopefully I'm going to get started for real today. The drive was just as unpleasant as I uh, as I imagined it would be. But I'm here and it looks like they're open, so we're doing much better than last week. October 2nd. Right, that was, that was incredibly overwhelming. You gotta know what you're doing and you gotta go for it. Since it's such a long drive and it is a lot, I don't know if I'll come here again. Yeah, that was, that was a lot, man. <laughs> um, With my fabric finally somehow in hand, it was time to start sewing. So regarding the fabrics that I decided to use, for the outer shell of the cloak, I got this light wool-ish fabric. Uh, I wanted to pay attention to the instructions on the back of the packet since when I first started cosplay, I would buy patterns and I wouldn't. I would just go to like the cotton section and pick cotton that was the right color. I'm way past that now. Um, and I picked this one because it was stiff, but still kind of flowy. I didn't want it to be like chiffon flowy and I didn't want it to have no movement. So this is what I went with. Then for the green fabric on the inside, if I was being super bougie, I could have gotten silk or something. But I went with this uh, satin. The hardest thing for this was just finding something that was the right shade of green. So I am very happy with that shade of green. I also wanted to make sure I got enough extra that I could also make the hat out of that same fabric since that's important to me for consistency. Uh, then there's the trim that I got. So his fabric or his costume has gold all, all around, gold trim all over it. And at first I thought I would do bias tape, but I ended up seeing this trim and getting that instead. I like it because the design adds some extra pizzazz to the costume. And what's the last thing? Buttons. So his costume has 10,000 buttons on it and I got these little these little gold ones that they're, they're really just buttons but those are the buttons that I got. Before I jump into sewing the robe I thought I would do a like a warm-up 
a slow burn to get me to that heavy duty stuff. So I'm starting like literally from the bottom of the costume and working up. So first I'm doing the leggings and the only thing about his leggings that is unique is that there's a little bit of ruching and then there are five buttons going up the side. I started off by making the buttons and when I was shopping for buttons at the fabric store, uh, there's, there's a ton of buttons on his costume and I figured I would just buy them. But a lot of the buttons that they had there were metal or they were very heavy. And the fabric that I'm using for his nightgown and for his leggings is like a soft, stretchy jersey, which doesn't hold a lot of weight very well. I also wanted the buttons to feel very flush with the garment, like they're a part of it. You can see that in the art that they're just they're like on there, they're not really popping off. So I decided to take some buttons from my stash and cover them in fabric. I ended up sacrificing a t-shirt that had a stain on it. So uh, for the first, for the leggings, I've done 10 buttons now. Just uh, wrap the, wrapped the fabric around the button and then sewed it up in the back. Here I have already started to add the buttons on and I have the dickie on underneath to give me that extended neckline. Like on the leggings, I added ruching to the top of the dickie as well. I also cut the nightgown a little bit shorter and I pinned and sewed the sleeves to make them more fitting. After that, I'll just have to add the, the ruffly parts on the sleeves. And there are also buttons. Rue! There are also buttons on his sleeves. We'll see about that. I've decided now to work on the wig. Uh, this is a wig that I originally purchased for a Hanako-kun cosplay. But I ended up having a, a different wig that I liked better. Also, this one was a little bit darker than what I was going for. Um, as you can see, the bangs are in my face, which I guess they should be. But at the moment, it's giving Lord Farquaad. So all I really need to do is trim these side areas so that it's less round. He has a, a true bowl cut and it goes, it goes pretty far back. One thing I really dislike about wigs is when it like is when they're too round and they make your head into a you just like feel bigger. So yeah, I'm not gonna touch the bangs, although I really want to because <laughs> my eyes hurt. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna touch the bangs. I'm just gonna I'm gonna come around the sides. Wow, look at her go! Cut, cut, cutting away. I inserted this footage to look like a cool time lapse, but it it looks kind of scary like you're just watching me in my room and I don't know. So sorry about that. Well, I guess that's it. My last couple cosplays and wig projects have been especially torturous with lots of spikes and complicated styles a part of it being me wanting to have the style be perfect what i'm getting at here is that this is the simplest wig i have done in a very long time and it feels good uh like th this is actually my real hair um i cut the sideburns off the wig entirely so yeah i put some of it behind my ears and then the rest i just i just trimmed in a straight line and it, it feels wrong to do that but like that's what his hair looks like it feels good 
Um, and I'm not done with this project yet. I arguably haven't started the hard part, but something that I'm noticing so far is that having a time constraint is kind of good for me. Uh, I mentioned at the top of the video that I like being able to take my time because I feel like it discourages crunching and helps me create something that is lasting and good. But I think it has also enabled me to spend ridiculous amounts of time on things that don't matter and to overcomplicate things. I'm, I'm the queen of overcomplicating things. So sorry, just my, my eyes are in pain from the wig hair. Um, but yeah, like just, this looks fine. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the next part. It was that easy. Laying out the fabric, you can see just how much I had to buy to make this cape. And I had to buy this in two colors. Laying out the patterns, cutting them out, drawing on the seam allowances, this took all day. Then the sewing, which is fairly straightforward since it's a lot of lines, straight lines, but it takes forever. Uh, interesting fact though is that it was on this project that I broke in a brand new sewing machine. The sewing machine I had been using for years broke down maybe two years before this. I think mid-2019 is when that machine broke down. And I had just not been machine sewing since then. So it was nice to, to break in a new machine. A little bit intimidating, but it's a mechanical machine and it works exactly like the one that I had before. So. That made me very happy, and it is my aesthetic. It's black and white, yes. At this point, I had sewed together something and was discussing how I felt wearing it and whether or not I wanted to change anything. So the biggest thing I noticed was that the little slits where my arms went through were not large enough. I also noticed that the uh, original has two slits, one for his sash and one for his arms, which I just fully did not notice until I got to this point, and I decided to do nothing about it. I decided to just use the same slits for my arms as for the cloak, and maybe if I hadn't told you that, you wouldn't have noticed. I have seen other cosplayers of him have the two slits, and every time I see it, I remember my shortcomings. Another thing I wanted to address was the hem, so it was very long for me to start, but also the hem on his costume is round. The whole, uh, the whole cloak has somewhat of a stingray shape, and I wasn't sure if I wanted to pursue this or not. I don't remember at what point it's going to come up, but I'll just tell you right now, I did decide to hem it in a circular shape, which went against the instructions on the cape, and I have always had trouble lining and hemming capes, and because I decided to cut it into a circle and do the hem that way, that caused me, that actually caused me a lot of trouble. That trouble came in the form of making sure that the lining was cut the same way as the shell. Uh, in general, when you hem and cut fabric, there's a lot of things you have to do, like cut it and then leave it to hang for a while so that it will stretch. Fabric stretches after it's cut. Um, these are things that you don't have time to do when you're con crunching a cosplay and adding that human element of I'm going to hand cut this by eye further complicates it. At the beginning of this project, I felt like, like a new woman, like I was turning a new leaf in my sewing journey, um, to speak normally. Uh, for a long time, I've been very, what's the word? unprofessional in my sewing, uh, very, very novice -y. I just wanted results, uh, which meant that I didn't pay a lot of attention to proper construction and actually making quality finishes, finishes especially the things that I, I have always struggled with. So at the beginning of this project, I was like, all right, make sure you're cutting on the grain, make sure you're buying the recommended fabrics, make sure you're marking all of your seams, blah, blah, blah. And uh, that worked very well up into the point where I needed to modify some pieces of the cloak 
to, to look more like his. And that's where things kind of fell apart and where I started to feel like my old self. And it was somewhat disappointing and somewhat refreshing. Refreshing because it was just like, whoop, <laughs> I know how to do all this stuff. Like, it's wrong, but I've done all this stuff before. Um, usually I view doing something like this as like a betrayal to all of the hard work that I did before. But um, it could partially be because of the time crunch and partially because... I couldn't not modify the cape like I did what I could to leave it in its original cut but when I kept looking back at his design it really needed that rounded hem and like there was really it, even if I had cut it straight it just wouldn't have looked enough like his outfit and I wanted that so I'm I'm uh, I'm laying in my basket. That doesn't that doesn't make any sense. You get what I'm saying. Um, I'm committing to the to the changes that I have made. Anyway, uh, so the pro so the problem that we have now is the hem. I was not able to properly finish the hem because um, because of the curves that I put into it. And I decided to do a technique, I'm saying technique because it's not something you should do, uh, that I did with my Tharja cape. So that one, I used like a chiffon shell and a polyester lining. Those did not go together. And the problem with that was that when I properly joined the fabrics, the shell lost its beautiful flowiness. So I left the bottom of the cape free which let it be flowy and then I put trims on like I put a uh, I put a what are they called tassel trim on the red part and I put a gold trim on the on the blue part and it looked really nice like I am I'm proud of that even though it's kind of messed up I'm also obsessed with putting fringes on capes so you know it worked out so with this one I did a similar thing where I left the the two pieces unconnected. And what this means is that my edges are raw. I zigzagged them for good measure, but the edges are raw. Also up here, I didn't cut enough in. Like it should be a sort of keyhole shape, but I left some tabs right here, which is where the buttons would go. And it kind of pops out and folds over, which isn't the best um i think i'd have to i'd have to take some stuff apart to fix that so you can see i'm running into problems that you run into when you crunch on a costume uh but it is kind of nostalgic because it reminds me of the way it's i it reminds me of the way i used to make costumes <sighs> we're in a home stretch i am kind of bummed the cape didn't come out perfect but it's fine that's fine Let's get some random footage in there. So at this point, it turns out that I was crunching so hard that I don't have any footage of me sewing on the rest of the decorations, which is like the buttons and the hat and blah, blah, blah. But uh, that's okay. What we're talking about now is when I actually wore it to the con. So this was Anime Weekend Atlanta 2022. This con takes place in late October, which made this a pretty good costume to wear. Uh, I wore it with my friend who I mentioned earlier. So the weather made this a great reason to wear this cosplay. The mask policy did not. Um, I became an unlockable character when I was inside. One cool thing was they had a spy family booth set up. This was like official. For whatever reason, no one ever comes to our cons in the South, even though Atlanta's like a big city. This, this is a beef I have personally that very few times do people ever come, like big corporations, but whatever. Um, they had this spy family thing set up, which was very cute. And I would say the lady who took the picture did us dirty because it's like, who are those people? Here's a cute picture we took behind a tree. AWA is nice now that it's later in the fall because there's always a bunch of really pretty leaves out. Um, we had a, a very nice girl, random girl took this picture for us. So thank you to her. An aesthetic shoe photo, of course. And a selfie, of course.
We also saw a bench and decided to Shinji pose on it. I had a really lovely time at the con. Um, the Witch Hat Atelier fandom, since it's a just a manga right now, the fandom is really tight knit and really like passionate and excited about each other and their costumes. And I saw just a bit of that at AWA, but it was like so exciting. Um, I ran into groups and people recognized me and people were excited to see me. I was like, wow! It kind of reminded me of when I first started cosplaying Fire Emblem. That was what the fandom felt like. I don't know what it feels like now. I I don't cosplay from it anymore but like that feeling of excitement at seeing other people wearing the same thing that you're wearing was really cool to return to. It was also fun cosplaying with my friend. Uh, I have friends. I have cosplay friends but um, just for a long time I never focused on cosplaying in groups and my friend group generally we don't have huge overlaps in our fandoms. We all just cosplay random characters together but sometimes I do feel like I've never pursued trying to do group cosplays with my friends and this is a this was part of me saying I'm gonna do that like I'm gonna not think so much about myself and like what I want to wear and like this was something I wanted to wear but you know like I also wore it because I could wear it with my friend sorry about the jingling in the background that's my dog moving around and I'm not gonna re-record this uh, the so the only maybe downside about this is that since this I usually prefer to cosplay characters for whom I have finished the series and uh, since I like encountered Yuini in the story and then immediately decided to cosplay him I feel like I didn't build up the same bond for him as a character that I have with other characters I've cosplayed so sometimes it felt like people were more excited to see me as Yuini than I was excited to be Yuini uh, and for example at that same con right afterwards I changed into Pride from Full Metal Alchemist and I was like yeah I'm Pride so I'm still working on my love for Yuini and my love for Witch Hat in general like I really like Witch Hat and I can tell it's really good but there is a switch that needs to be flipped in my mind that has not yet been flipped but when it is it's gonna be good so I wanted to lead with a bunch of positive stuff because there are some negatives, which would be that I did not, I was not proud of the costume while I was wearing it. It's not visible in the pictures, but the whole front of the costume where, uh, where you know, I said I had all of the hems were raw, there was just strings sticking out and the tabs were flipping open and my hat was really ugly like when i was i'll, I'll get i'll get to the hat the hat was really ugly and uh yeah i did not feel good wearing this costume and for future reference i do not plan to con crunch ever again so pray tell what was wrong with the hat well, it, it wasn't terrible. I only messed up in the sense that I forgot to hem it. I cut it into shape and then I trimmed along the edges and I was like, oh crud, it's going to get ugly on the bottom. So in remaking the hat, I, I remade it exactly the same way, but I remembered to hem it this time. And I also decided to spruce up the little front part. To make the hat, I started with a big old piece of felt. And uh, that's the inside part that gives it structure. I love felt, I use it for most things, but in this case, I'm using it because it gives structure and it doesn't fray. So I cut that into a cone shape. Then I cut out exactly the same shape on the green fabric, which would be the outer shell of the hat. Notice that this time I'm careful to leave extra on the sides for when I hem it. And to bring it all together, I cut out a piece of heat and bond. The 
The little decoration on the front of the hat is just a black scrap of fabric that I lined with trim. And since I was in a hurry, I painted on the little star pattern. But this time I wanted to do something extra, so I used some uh, glittery ribbon. When I originally made the costume, I was super hesitant on using hot glue. But this time I was like, nah! And I used hot glue a lot, so I used it to uh, affix the little, the little starburst stars. And I also hot glued along the edges so that I could fold the hem down. Then after that, I joined the cone and sewed through the hot glue, which was really difficult. It would have been easier if I didn't use the hot glue, but I didn't care. And there's the finished hat. It's a little bit ugly in the back, but you can't see that. That would be my only regret. Otherwise, I'm really happy with how it looks. It looks so much cleaner, and I even did the part at the very top, the little uh, metal part with the ring in it. So the little metal part is a piece of craft foam. And then the ring, I struggled a lot with figuring out how I should do the ring, and I ended up using a piece of uh, gold rope. To fix up the rest of the costume, first I decided I wanted to add more buttons. And the first time I sewed that button fabric on, this time though I hot glued it. And I also hot glued all of the new buttons that I made onto the nightgown instead of sewing them on. Because the first time when I sewed them on, uh, they wouldn't be totally lined up. And it was a pain in the butt to have to undo it. So hot gluing it, it happens quicker, I can keep a quicker eye on making sure that things are lined up. When I wore the nightgown to the con the first time, I didn't hem the bottom, so this time I decided to add some lace on the bottom to keep it from curling up. The part that absolutely needed the most help was the cape or cloak or whatever it's called. That's the reason the turnaround time on this video was so long, because I literally kept it in the trunk of my car because I was afraid to fix it. But I ended up closing it up. So I hemmed the raw edges and then just joined them together and I sewed all of this by hand. There are some places where it didn't quite match up, but like nobody notices, nobody cares. Um, it, it is a bummer that I wasn't able to create a perfectly beautiful garment that is outside of costume level, but um, I, that you have to know when to stop sometimes <laughs> and that's where I'm going to stop. Oh, and originally his costume just had uh, gold bias tape all around, but I did add that lace at the bottom because like I said, I like to add little fringy things to capes. Also, I ended up not fixing what I call the tabs, which is like the little collar area that kept flipping up. Um, it, it is still an issue, but I choose not to care about it. And considering how much better the hem is, I, I don't care anymore, but I might care later. But for now, I do not care. So now having made the costume, worn it, and then fixed it, I want to talk about what I would do differently now that I have that knowledge. I think a big part of this was my fixation on going back to wholesale fabric store because I told myself a long time ago I would do it next time I had a costume with a cape. And I was also trying to turn over a new leaf and say, I'm going to make a cosplay from scratch, which is just not something that I enjoy. Um, that's the truth and not to like put myself down, but every time I say I'm gonna, you know, make something flawlessly, it, it doesn't happen. And it's not because I can't do it, it's because I'm not particularly interested in going through all the work that it requires. So considering what I enjoy and with my skills in mind, what I think I should have done was bought two tablecloths, a black one and a green one. Because when you look at his cape, it is round. Um, and then there's a little notch cut out where, where the neck and the body go, and then there's the slits. And so much of my trouble was from trying to cut the cape to be round. And um, I don't know, I think even if I hadn't struggled with trying to cut the cape to be round, the fabric would have been cheaper um, if I had bought it as a tablecloth. 
and it may not have been as nice as what I ended up with like I got some really good fabric but at the same time I like kind of butchered the fabric that I bought and um, it would have been cheaper if I had used tablecloths so uh, I would go back to the wholesale fabric store to buy the trims and buy the buttons I think that was a really great deal but um, I think like in the future I'm gonna stay on the cheap side because that's where I'm happy um, like I said it's not because I think I'm not good enough it's because that's what makes me happy and like cutting out the pattern and laying out the fabric and cutting the seam out, it's not fun to me <laughs> and I would rather have the joy of saying this was a tablecloth. Like I told so many people like, this is a nightgown. Like that was, that was what made me happy. So um, yeah, that is what I would do in the future. And like, I kept that, I actually considered just um, scrapping what I had made and wore the first time. That's why it sat in the trunk of my car for so long. Cause I just like, didn't want to address all the things I knew I had to fix. But you know, since I, I had it, I didn't want to waste it. Um, I did fix up the costume and I am happy with it. I feel like I'm being like kind of negative towards it because there's there's just always gonna be things you're unhappy with, I think with things that you've made. But um, yeah, I, I am fine with the costume now. And like, I think now that all of that stuff is behind me, I will be able to make happier memories in it. Um, but yeah, next time I have a costume like this that I need to make, I'm gonna buy tablecloths and that's what I'm going to do. So the second con I wore this to was Momocon 2023. Uh, Momocon is a much hotter con than Anime Week in Atlanta because it's smack dab in the middle of the summer. But for whatever reason, we were blessed with the best Momocon weather I have ever seen this year. So... That was fantastic. Another thing that made this a fantastic witch hat experience was that there was a witch hat meetup and a witch hat picnic. So um, I found out about the witch hat picnic through uh, through Instagram, just through 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 people talking about it. Um, I was invited to a Discord, and yeah, this this thing happened. This is something I was really excited to be a part of because I feel like, uh, well, I haven't talked about Lolita in a while, but you know, I have joined my local Lolita community and something I really like about it is that we just get together and dress up and hang out. And I feel like that's something that's sort of missing from cosplay. I think I joined cosplay during a time when everybody kind of wanted to be like hot on social media and I got swept up in that as well. And I feel like I sort of missed the more communal days of cosplay before it really blew up. And something I, I usually say like how come we as cosplayers don't do things like the Lolitas do and to some extent I understand it because I don't I don't really want to like dress up as witch hat char characters and go to a random cafe that would be kind of weird but I, I hope you get my what I'm trying to say um, I wish cosplayers sort of did more things like that uh, I think ideally you have friends and you and your friends go and do things like that but it's also exciting to get together with people who you don't know as well and the thing that's bringing you together is your love of cosplay or your love of that series and anyway this was a great example of that uh, first we had the the photo shoot and then we went and did the picnic. It was really awesome. We had so many cute snacks and food. Uh, I brought bologna sandwiches, which I like to call the meat of the people. Um, we also had alcohol for those who were of age, which includes me. And uh, there was even a photographer. The organizers had, um, had a photographer come. And uh, this is the only picture of me. I was sitting in a corner, but I'm glad that that can be my legacy. And there was even another person cosplay Nuini. And that's another thing that makes it fun is seeing how other people do the same character. And doing this really made me excited about the witch hat fandom. It made wearing my costume more fun. And it encouraged me, I think, to try to do these things myself. Like try to put stuff like this together 
for things that I like and try to bring that joy to other people. And this picnic was one of the things that really helped make my Momocon. So that brings this video to a close. <laughs> Just kidding. I want it to be an hour long. Uh, so I want to talk about a couple other things that I did. Um, I had planned to make a prop for this cosplay and I did not have time to do that. So I'm going to make another video about that. And I'm also going to include in that video, I wanted to make the, the cloak that he wears on top of his cloak because I think that would be really cool. I thought about bringing it to Momocon, um, but it's like fur and I think I would have collapsed if I wore that. So whenever I get around to making that prop, I'll also make that cape and that will be like a little follow-up video despite wanting this video to be an hour long because I'm only a couple minutes away from it being an hour long. It would probably be better if I made fewer videos that are so exhaustive or at least um, comprehensive. Sometimes it holds me back when I feel like a video has to be so comprehensive. Uh, another thing I made was this brush bug. Uh, this was something that I had wanted to bring to AWA, didn't have time to do until Momocon, and um, the brush bug came with me. So that was pretty fun. And then the final thing that I did was I took some pictures. I, <laughs> on, the, uh, on the wings of saying I don't want everything to be too comprehensive, uh, I've done a couple cosplay things where I stick a, a photo shoot at the end and I thoroughly explain the photo shoot because I like to talk about that kind of stuff. I thought that would be too much for this video. Then I saw I had to fill up time. And I also got an inspiration. So I did a baby photo shoot, three photos, and I'm gonna show those to you right now. So this shoot was inspired by when he is, no spoilers, this, this really doesn't have any spoilers. This is inspired by when he was in the cave and since he's very shy, he was hiding inside of his cloak. And I thought that was really cool. So I got the idea of shooting my camera through some lace that I have. Originally, I wanted it like, I am completely under the lace and you see through it and you see me, sort of like you're looking at the cloak and the cloak is see-through. But when I was trying that, I think since the lace is patterned, it wasn't showing very well. So I decided to shoot like I am in the cloak and you are in the cloak with me. The first uh, couple ones I tried, I tried it without the black outer cloak on uh, because that would make sense, but it was I wasn't as recognizable because I also wasn't wearing the hat. So I decided to keep the black cloak on and um, yeah, just for, forget about that. So yes, for these three pictures, it's uh, some pretty pretty basic poses. For the composition, I wanted to keep it like kind of what's the word constricted, uh, trapped, claustrophobic. Like you know, you're you're in the you're in the cloak because you know he's in the cloak because he feels safe there but at the same time he's a nervous person so those are the ideas that I'm going for and another big thing I was going for with these photos was color grading so in my Pride Full Metal Alchemist cosplay video I talked at the end in that photo shoot about how I've been wanting to learn color grading more because I feel like that will really boost my photography uh, I, I've kind of thought a lot about why color grading doesn't come to me naturally and I think a big reason for that is because I like to compose things in real life like I like to physically set up a set to take a picture in and since I've already set it up in real life it's like well I already made those color selections in real life and I don't want to touch them digitally because those you know I, I already set it up how I like but this one didn't really have a set. And I also think it's good to work with color palettes and enhance things. So I think in the future, even when I do more set type photos, I'm going to try to enhance the colors and, I don't know, come up with good color palettes. Like I'm really trying to pay attention to color palettes. So uh, for this one, I was struggling a bit because that, like I said, that stuff 
is not stuff I usually do. I didn't really have a color palette in mind when taking the photo. So I have this folder in my phone that I call Inspiration and it's full of like fan art, other cosplays, classical paintings, just stuff that I see online that inspires me in some way. Uh, I'm not going to publish anybody else's fan art. I keep that for me. But this one I based on a classical painting. And uh, I just sort of, that was like the first one that came up in the folder and I was like, okay, I'm just gonna steal the color palette from that. So I tried to take a lot of the blues the stark whites. I feel like color grading a cosplay photo with cyan is sort of a generic thing to do, but I went with it anyway, and I think it goes with the in a cave aesthetic. So that's what I went for with these. I would say the compositions, um, they accomplished the claustrophobic look I was going for, but they are, they are also very me. Um, if you've seen a lot of my photography, I, I'm sure I have taken a portrait that looks exactly like all three of these before. But that's fine. Um, you know, this was very much a spur of the moment, like I came home one day and I was like, I'm gonna take this picture kind of thing, and now I have I have some pictures of you, Weenie. And whenever I make those props that I mentioned earlier, I'm going to take more pictures and maybe try to make them more conceptual. But it was nice to have some moody, aesthetic pictures that I've taken myself. And with that, we should now be at the hour mark, which is what I wanted. Uh, so. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. Um, I, I didn't intend for this video to come out so long, but it was also, it was fun to make. I hope that it was entertaining to watch even as a like background noise kind of thing. I like really long videos for that reason. And I think that's why one of my aspirations has been to make them. But I also like to include what a comprehensive process cosplay is, um, you know, with why do you like this series enough to cosplay it? What is it about this character that made you want to cosplay them? What was it like making the costume? How do you feel now that you're in the costume? I think all of those things are very interesting because when you think about it, cosplay is a very interesting hobby. Uh, I did cosplay photography a lot like in college and my professor was always, one of my professors was always trying to make it deeper than it is like for what reason do you want to change yourself? And I think that was a little too much. I was like, whoa, whoa there, I'm just trying to have a good time. But in a sense he was right. Like, what is it? it it's, uh, there's, there's a lot to cosplay. So with that, I'm going to say uh, thank you very much for watching. Have you read Witch Hat Atelier? Would you like to read it now? Um, who's your favorite character? And who would you cosplay and do you cosplay it already? Thank you once again.